build it up the same way. Okay, cosine of zero is one. Okay, cosine of zero is one. Use your unit circle. Okay, cosine of zero is one. Uh, let's see here. Where does cosine equal zero? I over two. Okay. What does cosine equal at pi? Negative one. And where does cosine equal zero again? Three pi over two. We started at positive one, so to complete our cycle, we've got to end at positive one. Where does that occur? Two pi. Okay. There is our one complete cycle. So it's similar to sines. It's still curved. We still hit the same maximum and minimum values. We still hit the same y values. It's just in different places. Okay. So it looks very different right at this moment. Well, not very different, but clearly it's different from sine. Um, but really, if we finish it out, if we keep drawing it like we did with sine, go beyond 2 pi, um, hit your negative values as well, you will see that, oh, well, it really doesn't look that much different from sine. It's just kind of shifted over. has the same general shape, it's just kind of shifted. Okay, so there's our cosine of, cosine of x function from negative 3 pi to positive 3 pi. Domain's the same. We still don't have any issues. We can find the cosine of any angle that we want to. We don't have any holes, we don't have any asymptotes, we don't have any breaks in our graph. Our range is the same. We still hit the same minimum value. We still hit the same maximum value. Nothing's different there. Now our y-intercept is different. Where do we cross the y-axis on this one? At one. Okay, we don't start at the origin, we start at 1, um, so we don't start on the midline, we start off of the midline. Okay, sine started on the midline, in the middle of its function, cosine starts at its maximum value. Our intercepts, our x-intercepts, don't occur at multiples of pi. Our x-intercepts occur at multiples of pi over 2. So here's how you write your x-intercepts in general form. Pi over 2 plus pi k is how we write our x-intercepts. And k, again, is an integer. That's pretty widely accepted um, notation that k always represents an integer. I just write it because if you ever see that phrasing, I don't want it to take you by surprise. I don't want you to be thrown off by that um, if you see that phrasing. Okay, now let's talk about the period, frequency, amplitude, and midline of cosine. So, figuring out the period, we do it the same way we did the last one. Okay, on the y axis, it starts up there at 1. We've got to see, well, how far do we have to travel before we get back to the beginning? Okay, where we, we got to hit the minimum value we gotta get, and then get back up to where we started. So it's still a distance of 2 pi. It's just we start and end in, uh, at different y values. Okay, that's still one cycle, which is 2 pi. So the period is still 2 pi. It just looks a little different. in where we start and end. Okay, so the frequency is still 1 over the period. So 1 over 2 pi. The amplitude is still 1. Okay, from the midline to the maximum or the midline to the minimum is still 1. And our midline is still the x-axis, y equals 0. Um, 
that does not change either. Okay, now I'm getting ready to have you do a little investigative activity here um, to talk about well, what happens if we do some things to our function. Now we're just going to look at cosine, but these rules still apply to sine. We're going to look at well, what happens if we throw some different constants in there. What happens if we throw a constant in front of the cosine function? What happens when we put a number there for a? What happens if we put a number with our x? What happens when we add or subtract a number from the end? How does that affect our graph? How does it affect our period, frequency, and midline? Okay, so I'm gonna, what I have is on the haiku page, um, I have an interactive graph where it already has these values built in, but you're going to use sliders to change them, and I have specific questions that I want you to answer, and I want you to answer them in regards to, well, how does that affect my period? How does it affect my amplitude? How does it affect the midline? Um, because really nothing's going to affect your domain. The domain, the domain is still going to be all real numbers. Now, if you change the amplitude of midline, that, of course, is going to affect your range um, and potentially your, your y-intercept as well. But I want you to focus on these four new terms, the period, the frequency, the amplitude, and the midline. Um, but instead of me just telling you, because when I just tell you things, it kind of goes in one ear and out the other, because I bet about half of you could tell me that the period of sine and cosine is too high right now. Um, I'm going to have you work through it. I want you to write down the conclusions on your paper. Okay, I want you to write them down like notes. So don't just answer the question. And based on your answer, you can't tell what the question was. You need to kind of write down what you're what you're responding to so that you can look back at it as notes later on. Okay?